So I found this beetle here in my Sherwood, Oregon backyard last night. Never seen one of them during the day. Only ever while I was out hunting around at night, with my headlamp on, containers in my pockets. It looks very much like a ground beetle, but I was always sort of suspicious of that. And at one time, I learned that their genus was Helops. And the way I did that was through a website called bugguide.net. Some of you may be familiar with it. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about Bug Guide. This is the home page here. And if I type up here the word Helops, it will bring up a lot of pictures of this beetle and related members. And I sort of scroll through here to find one that looks similar to the one that I was just taking video of, and this one looks like it. And there it is, Helops. This one was collected in British Columbia. What I'm going to do is come back here and click on the genus Helops, and then I'm going to go back here to the taxonomy page. And you can see that the genus Helops is represented here on the guide with these various families. And I could click through all of these and try to find a match for my particular beetle. Another thing that I could do instead, which is a little bit easier, is go to this next tab here. We're on the taxonomy tab right now. And we're still in the Helops section here. I could go to this info page here, and it talks about the genus itself, the genus Helops. So this is their page here on Bug Guide. And you can see the classification here. It goes all the way down from Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Arthropoda, Hexapoda, Insecta, all the way down to the family, which is Tenebrionidae, and then down here to the genus Helops. Within Helops, on this taxonomy page here, you can see these species here too that were listed on the guide. Back here on the info tab, we can see that there have been some changes in the way they described them, named the genus. They can talk about in 1775, they created the name of this genus, and this is the author that created that name. It says that here in North America, which by that they only mean the United States and Canada, there are 35 species. And it says that they are nearly cosmopolitan, which means that they live in cities. And that most species occur from Western North America to Central America, East of Texas, there are just four described and two undescribed, both Florida species. So they provide some information there, and then there's some work cited down here. So I'm going to click on the Browse tab up here next, actually. And one way that you can find pictures of something that matches an insect that you found in your backyard is to scroll through the browse tabs on Bug Guide, and you can see there are five pages of them here. And so you would just kind of keep uh, clicking through. This one's shiny like the one that I had in my video. And you keep going through until you find one that looks like a match. And uh, there are times where I recognize some images because well, you can see that there's a ruler in this one, so I'm going to click on this one here. And when I started uh, preparing to take this video today, I actually came to Bug Guide and thought, um, before I turn the camera on, I'm going to see if I can identify which kind of Helops this was. And lo and behold, you can see right there that I uploaded photos of the species 
five or six years ago to bug guide and I'd simply forgotten that I had done that. And here's some interesting history about how all of that works. So I uploaded it on October 29th, 2014. I had measured the specimen as nine millimeters. And that kind of information helps the people that later come on to the guide to identify the specimens that people contribute. And one of the neat things about Bug Guide is that people from all over the country and Canada, they upload their photos and so it contributes not just to what they know about the beetles when they are later identified, but to the database of knowledge that we all have about what's out there and where it can be found. A very important resource for me for many years. It's always been very important to me to know the name of the things that I encounter. And so I uploaded this image, these three images, back in 2014. And you can see down at the bottom here the oldest entry where someone uh, took action upon my upload. A few days later, this guy here, Blaine Matheson, he moved it out of the General Beatles section where I had uploaded it. And then, four years later, this guy here, Mr. Belov, who is very prolific on Bug Guide and has probably identified the majority of things that I have uploaded right down to species level. It's very amazing. Um, he actually classified it to species level, and so it was moved from beetles, not just to helops, but to helops letus by this guy right here about seven months ago now. And so a lot of time passed, but people continue to scour the, uh, the uploaded images and files here on Bug Guide and work to identify them, sometimes even years later, which is just wonderful. I'll get an email about something that I completely forgot about and someone will identify it. And then finally, after years of not knowing, wondering, and probably re-encountering that same species in my backyard, I'll suddenly have an answer to an age-old mystery. So after he had identified, you can see that um, that same day, well, just five minutes later, actually, I saw the email come into my inbox and I said thank you to him. And so if you ever want to use Bug Guide, to have something from your yard identified, what you do is come up here to this ID request tab at the top of the website and you click on that and then you can look through these recent images that people uploaded. It looks like this is the most recently uploaded one and it was uploaded a couple days ago. It's not really bug season and so I'm going to do another test here. This one was uploaded well, I guess it was updated today. And so this one was actually uploaded two years ago, three years ago, but somebody came along today on March 3rd. And this one was updated about two hours ago and uh, people are providing more information, sort of brainstorming on the idea sometimes before actually locking it down. So anyway, back here on this ID request page, all you would need to do if you wanted to have something identified by all the experts on Bug Guide is click this Add Image tab. And then you come to this page here and you fill out the title and your state or province. In Canada, they have provinces. Your county, city, location, date, you measure the specimen and measurements are typically given in millimeters since insects are small and uh, science likes to measure things using the metric system rather than in inches like we do here in the United States. You will browse to wherever you had your files located and attach your images and then I try to provide as much information in this remarks section as I can um, little things about where the specimen was found in terms of the habitat and maybe some behavioral information. Sometimes these little additional bits of information besides these 
fields up here can go a long way to help somebody identify something. And then if you know them, you can check these boxes down here about whether it was a male or a female, an adult or an immature specimen, and then this field down here is optional also. Uh, Bug Guide has these gatherings here where people get together. I've gone to two of them. I went to one back in 2009 that I really enjoyed in Washington, and I think it was called the Pack Forest, and uh, actually met one of my very good uh, bug friends there, and we've been friends now for 10 years, and uh, go on trips together to collect insects. And so it's a great place to meet like-minded people. So that's Bug Guide. You can uh, register. It is free to register. Um, unless you are registered as a member, um, you won't be able to use all of the functions on the website. And I'll show you show you some information about that. So here on this page, if I click this data tab right here, you have to be logged in to really use the data tab. And I'm actually going to back it out here just a little bit. So for the genus Helops, on the data tab, because I'm logged in, I can actually see information down here. You'd be able to see these pages, this page right here, but you wouldn't be able to click on these links. And so I can click on Oregon because I'm logged in and see all of the records for the genus Helops that occur in the state of Oregon since the guide was put up, I think, in 2003. And this is one of the best ways to identify things, is to use that data tab. If you have a little bit of information that gets you going, let's say, for example, that you knew it was a beetle. And so I'm going to click beetles here. And then I can go down here for every state and I can click Oregon <laughs> if, I, if I know my alphabet. Oregon and it will generate it says too many results so that's interesting 3037. So anyway um, go back here one page and um, specify things a little bit more than that so we will say uh, tenebrianid beetles down here, tenebrianid family beetles, and then we'll see if we can get some records for that. So we got in Oregon, yeah, so there's 310 images that have been contributed for the state of Oregon for beetles in the family tenebrianidae. And so you can scroll down and see all of them. They're not always correct, like you can see this right here. This is an oil beetle, which is actually a kind of blister beetle. And then you come up here. Oh, I guess I had, I had uh, clicked a more of a super family thing. Anyway, these are in the family Meloidae. So you got to play around with it a little bit before you become familiar with it. Um, it does help to have a general understanding of taxonomy to use this website, but you'll pick things up pretty quickly. And really, I'm telling you, it's just so much fun to browse Bug Guide. You can get lost in it, go down the rabbit hole, as they say, like anybody surfing on the internet, where you start out looking at one thing and then you come to a page like this, for example, where, you know, Eugene, Oregon, and uh, Banks, Oregon, and Hasita Head, that's out at the beach, and Legrand is in Eastern Oregon. So you start looking at things and you're thinking about maybe a trip you're planning or something and then you just you just get so excited and um, want to learn about all of these other things that you didn't know existed. And uh, yeah, it happens to me a lot. So this is Bug Guide, probably my favorite website ever. And uh, you can see there that they put it up in 2003 and so it's been running for 13 years uh, the department of entomology there at iowa state